Hey team, I'm Josh, and in this video we'll be covering the top 5 things you need to know before purchasing a Sonos speaker. Sonos has created its brand around making a really good Wi-Fi enabled smart speaker. That being said, if you're still using your internet provider's crappy router, then get rid of it. There are so many better mesh networks out there, which essentially gives you multiple units that you can put around the house to give you a better Wi-Fi coverage. These routers also enable more devices to be connected to it at once, streaming music, video, and whatever else you do in your house all at once. I'd sort out your internet first, as once you get your Sonos speaker and you want to upgrade it later, you pretty much have to reset the system and set it back up again on your new Wi-Fi network, which is a big pain in the butt. Now most Sonos products come with an Ethernet port built into the speakers. I would avoid the hassle of having to hardwire all of the speakers together and just do it wirelessly with the mesh networks that I just mentioned before. The Wi-Fi chips in all of these speakers is really good, and I've found them to be more reliable than the Ethernet counterparts. I was setting up three Sonos amps the other week and connected them all through hardwired Ethernet as their router was sitting right next to it. I had nothing but trouble trying to get them connected to the network. I tried a different router, different cables, nothing worked. As soon as I enabled Wi-Fi and connected it that way, it worked so much better. At the heart of the Sonos system is the Sonos S2 app. That allows you to change exactly where in the house the sound is coming from. So say you wanted to take the TV audio and send that through to any other room in the house. Through the S2 app, you can group rooms together and it will channel any audio coming from the TV through those speakers. You can also use any of your streaming apps such as Spotify or Apple Music. You can start them in one room and you can just join up other rooms and so the whole house will have amazing audio. If you move into a house and it already has ceiling speakers, you can use that as part of the Sonos system by connecting a Sonos amp which gives you two channels of audio and you can always add more if you want to as well as a subwoofer out so you can add your own subwoofer. Sonos engineers do a really good job at making Sonos speakers sound bigger than they actually are. I've had a Sonos One in my bedroom for about two years, and every time I turn that on, I'm surprised at the amount of bass that's able to be reproduced by such a small capsule. Whenever I get a speaker, the first thing I like to do is check out its bass response. For the Sonos, you have a bass slider you can turn up, and for the most part, in my honest opinion, I find that the bass is really good all the way up to max. The unfortunate thing is that my wife normally tells me to turn it down because it's too much. Sonos has come out with an ingenious way of tuning your room using what they coined true play. In a nutshell, when you want to do the tuning, the speaker emits a pulsing sound and using the iPhone's microphone, it is able to pick up where objects are in the room and adapt it for the best possible sound in the space that you've provided. The first time I had this demo to me, my friend took a Sonos One and put a cardboard box directly over top of it. Then he played some music out of it, and to be honest, it didn't sound very good at all, as you can imagine. Then he did the true play tuning, and it sounded like the box had just been taken off of the speaker. At that point, my mind was blown. <laughs> Sonos claims that over time, the tuning will get better as the speaker re-evaluates the sound within the room. Sonos is ideal for those of you that move fairly often. You're able to just pick up all of your Sonos speakers and your router, take it to your new place, and when you plug them back in, they pretty much set themselves back up. Minus the true play tuning, of course. Sonos puts a lot of R&D into their design, and it really shows, as they make speakers that are timeless and modern. You can also choose whether you want to have your speakers be the hero of the room, or you want them to blend in with the other furniture. Here's a bonus point for you. Sonos is a premium brand, and with that comes a premium price. They're not cheap pieces of kit, but they hold their value really well. If you go and have a look at the used market now for some of Sonos's legacy products, you'll be surprised at how much money they sell for, which is great for when you're wanting to sell your current Sonos setup and upgrade to whatever Sonos comes out with later on. The Sonos Play Bar came out in 2013, and has only recently been discontinued. Seven years for a tech product is a long time. 
which is great news for those of you that are buying the Sonos Arc or the Beam now, as you know you'll get many years of enjoyment out of it to come. With that, if you have any questions about the points that I've made in this video, please leave them down in the comments. I'd also like to hear from you, what is your favorite Sonos product? If you've liked this video, I'll be doing some other related content to Sonos products, soundbars, and TV audio equipment coming up, so feel free to subscribe so you don't miss those when they come out. That's all from me, see you guys soon.